Hello. Have you ever heard of this stuff before? Root grow. Mycorrhizal fungi. Well, I've got to tell you, I've only discovered it over the last couple of months. Uh, and I've had to swat up on it on the internet. Uh, and I've been watching other people's videos, people that have used this stuff. And if you can believe everything it says on the packet, boy, we should all be using this. This is the future. I'll just give you some of the spiel that, uh, that you'll find on the internet, but please, if you're interested in this, just Google micro heisel fungi and you'll get everything you need to know about the stuff. Um, it lives in a symbiotic relationship with plants, enabling them to extract nutrients and hold on to water in very difficult soil conditions. Well, if it'll do that, that's a tick in the box, isn't it? In effect, this fungus provides a secondary root system and it is considerably more efficient and extensive than the plant's own root system. Wow! <laughs> is this gardening or rocket science? These fungi are living organisms and will live with the plant, sourcing a continued nutrient supply from its, for its entire lifetime. And in exchange, the plant provides carbon and sugars to the fungi. This symbiotic relationship enhances the plant's root system capacity to deliver nutrients. So, whatever it is you want your plant to take up, whatever nutrients are in your soil or your compost, whatever you're feeding with, the additional root mass um, is going to access it more easily and uh, get it into the, your um, plants more easily. Apparently, just one teaspoon of this uh, mycorrhizal fungi can turn up to 5,000 pieces of fungi all ready to explode into growth, colonising every millimetre of plant roots in a matter of days. Well, that's it, isn't it? That's it. We're going to have a go with this. Now I'll tell you what we're going to do. I've already prepared um, some vegetables that I've already got growing, uh, but I'm going to interrupt that growth and I'm going to apply some of this mycorrhizal fungi uh, directly to the roots. Okay, and we're going to do it as a sort of a field trial. So let me just put this to one side um, and then we'll, we'll get the plants into the shot uh, and we'll apply this mycorrhizal fungi to the roots. Now then, these two slates, I'm going to use these two slates to grind a bit of this up because I'm also going to apply this to some seeds and I want it to be finer than it is. If you look at this stuff, if, if you can see it, when I put some out, there we go. It's quite, um, it's quite granular, it's quite coarse, look. You see that? It's quite granular, it's quite coarse. Um, and applying that to roots, it's possibly just going to fall off the roots. If you're planting in the garden, put some of this in the bottom of the hole you're planting in, and the job's done, the roots will grow through it. Um, but because I've started these things off, and because I'm doing this as a field trial, um, I want to grind this stuff up. Okay. And it's as simple as this. How's that? That looks a bit finer. It isn't powder yet, but the granules are smaller than they were. Give it another go. Okay, and to assist me in this um, experiment, I needed some um, clear containers so that if there is any root growth, hopefully we can see it. So this is a half pint plastic glass. Okay, 
I've got a few of these. I've already topped them up with compost and they've all got just the one hole in the bottom. Okay, now I think what we'll do is we'll do the um, potatoes first. I'll need to just move that over there. I'll move this here. Um, and these potatoes, the shop bought potatoes, these potatoes are, let me think, these potatoes are shallot. And they've been in this container now for about three weeks, I think. So I'm expecting to find some chits, because there were chits on the potatoes when they went in. And I'm hoping there's going to be some root exposed. So we'll just take this out. To stop this sweet potato falling out, I'm going to put my finger on it like this. So that when I tip it, just move this mic, might as well fungi a bit further if we can. Still on. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll just ease it out of shot for the time being. And we'll get this in the middle of the shot. Okay, so you put your finger in there, feel for the sweet potato, and hold it back so it can't fall out. Like it just did. <laughs> right, okay, so it's out. So we'll have a look at it while it's out, shall we? Right, these are the chits. And these are the roots emanating from the base of the chit. Now then, you may have thought that roots from potatoes come from the bottom of the seed potato. They don't. They come from the base of the chit. If all the chits are on the top, all the roots will come from the top. If the chits are near the bottom, around the sides, the roots will come from the bottom, around the sides. But I think you can see there, we've got chits on the side and chits on the top. How's that? Can you see that fungi on those roots? So it's exactly where we want it to be. Exactly. Um, now if you're planting these outdoors, if, you, if you're not doing this, if, you, if you're ready to go, then there's no reason why you can't just put this stuff in the bottom of the plant, you know. But because I can see the roots, I've decided to put this stuff directly on the roots. Because we're now going to put it in a clear container. Um, had I been keeping it in that uh, original three inch pot, then I would never have needed to take it out. I could have supported it with my finger and drizzled the uh, mycorrhizal fungi in there. But because I'm changing containers, I did need to take it out. So this is our clear container now, and it's got some compost in the bottom. We'll just pop that guy in there. We'll give him a little more of this stuff, like that. And then we'll fill it up like this. Okay, and we'll shake it in, give it a little firm, like so. That's it. Now then, so that potato has been treated with mycorrhizal fungi. We'll call it my fungi. So we'll pop that in there and we'll put that there. Now then, for this to be a, a realistic field trial, we need to compare that potato with one that isn't treated. Okay, so we've got another Charlotte potato in this pot, which as I say, we wouldn't normally take it out. If I was applying this, I could apply it in the pot simply by holding the seed potato back. But I'm gonna let this one come out as well. There's the roots, you can see the roots. And we won't put a marker in that one because that one hasn't been treated with mycorrhizal fungi. Okay, how's that? So we've got two Charlotte potatoes, one treated with mycorrhizal fungi and one not. Uh, and according to the literature, it's only a matter of days before this stuff um, takes effect. So hopefully in, in a week or two's time, we're going to see some roots. Right, a couple of onions. I think there is a stir on. I can't recall how long they've been in these pots. I think maybe another two or three weeks. I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay, so one will be the set that has the mycorrhizal fungi, and one will be the set that doesn't. See what we've got here. Okay, 
Now, as you can see, we've got a few roots there to start the root. What we'll do is I'll, I'll try and keep this as a level playing field as possible. Um, and I'll try and make sure these two root, uh, root balls are roughly the same size so that one hasn't got a head start. Oh, right, one hasn't got a head start over the other. Well, they don't look too bad, do they? I mean, this has got three longish roots on it. This has got half a dozen shortish roots on it. Three longish, half a dozen shortish. I'm going to call that even, Stephen. Okay, we'll just pop them down there for a minute. Put this in, and what we'll do is we'll just poke our finger in like so, so we can hopefully get these roots down there. We'll put some of this across the roots and in the hole. Okay, in the hope that some sticks to the roots, but in any case, uh, the roots are going to find this. We'll take our time popping this in. Okay, don't need to go that far down. And we'll just tease the compost in around that. How's that? Okay. So that's the stir on that's got mycorrhizal fungi in it. Okay, put that to one side, and the next one doesn't get any mycorrhizal fungi. It just goes in here, like this. Okay, make sure we took the roots in, tease that compost around there, make sure we've got it. How's that? And of course, I'll give these guys a little water in, uh, but probably not off camera. Right, what are we doing next? What we got here? Right, move that out of the way again. Um, these are a couple of broad beans. So I'm going to empty these out. I'm not too sure if, what the roots are like on these guys. Um, one will get mycorrhizal fungi, one won't. Okay. Well, I think you can see we've got a few roots there, haven't we? Got something to work with. We'll have a look at this other one. See what we've got here. Well, this guy doesn't seem to have started to throw roots down yet. I think you can see that, so. We'll give this guy the mycorrhizal fungi, the one that hasn't got the roots down. So he's definitely starting uh, second on the grid, isn't he? This guy's got roots, this one hasn't. So this is the one we'll give the mycorrhizal fungi to. Put a little bit in the hole. I'll sit that guy there, put a bit round him and we'll put him in that pot. Okay. And that's the one that has the mycorrhizal fungi. Okay. My fungi as I'm calling it. We'll pop that over there. And this one, this one, well it just goes in as is. Okay. We'll just pop him in as he is and see how he goes. Right, now we're going to do these carrots and I think these are going to be a bit more difficult because they're a, they are a seed. Um, we're going to maybe struggle to coat these, I'm not too sure. Well, the thing is, um, there are no roots at the moment. So we're going to try and coat the seed with some mycorrhizal fungi, plant the seed, and hopefully, when that seed germinates, um, the fungi can get into contact with the roots. Okay, so I think what we'll do is, we'll just cover the surface of this 
put some like that little fungi on the surface. Okay. Just gives it a better chance of uh, coming into contact with any roots. Pop that on one side. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop this on here uh, and I'm going to take some seeds out of this packet and, and roll them about in this mycorrhizal fungi. I'm not looking for a lot. Um, so we'll pop these here. But we'll just roll them about in the fungi. Okay, and hopefully I can pick these guys up again, one at a time. Um, but I don't know if I can, because I haven't tried it. Okay, so we'll do this. Yeah, that was one definitely dropped in, you'll have to take my word for it. Two. Three, four I think. I'm picking small pieces of the fungi up here and thinking it's a seed. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put a few more seeds in there than I actually intended, just to make sure I've got some in there. Give these guys a quick roll in this fungi. And what we can do is, if this pot's overcrowded, we can always take a few of these guys out. Right, and now we'll just drill some compost on top of that. And that's our, um, that's our carrots, sown, um, with some mycorrhizal fungi in there. So all that's left to do now is to put this mycorrhizal fungi to one side, bring in this last pot, sow a few more carrots in that, and then we're up and running. Um, so if you, as I've said, if you need any more information on this stuff, Google it. There's loads of stuff on the internet, there is, and um, if this stuff will do what it says on the packet, we should all be using it. We should, we really should, uh, but we'll find out, won't we, because we're going to run this trial. And you'll have an answer in a week or two's time, and probably in a week or two's time you'll be ready for putting stuff in the garden, because you can't do it now, it's too cold and it's too wet. Um, so if you wanted to use this stuff in your garden, um, in a week or two's time you'll see the results, so you might be able to make a, a better judgement as, as to whether it's worth the expense, whether it's worthwhile. Okay, so we'll just move this out the way now. We'll just push that down there like that nice and flat. And what we'll do is, we'll have a look at what we've got here. Let me see if I can get this all into the shot. I'm not too sure I can. Just move it all down a bit, I think. Yeah, that's not looking so bad. So we've got um, Charlotte, mycorrhizal fungi, no mycorrhizal fungi, broad bean um, bunyard exhibition, mycorrhizal fungi, no mycorrhizal fungi, carrots, I think they're Kingston F1 or something. Mycorrhizal fungi, no mycorrhizal fungi, onion sets, sturon, mycorrhizal fungi, no mycorrhizal fungi. Right then, that's it. We'll upload this video. Um, you can see what I'm up to. Um, and in, as I say, in a few weeks' time, I'm hoping to bring this tree out and show you um, either a success or a failure with this mycorrhizal fungi. I wouldn't like to predict it one way or the other, but um, if it does what it says on the packet, boy, it's good tackle. Okay, so this is homegrown veg, signing out.